community safety. David Clendon. I'm pleased to take a short call on this bill, which the Greens have supported to this point, and uh, we will continue to support the legislation. I recall in my first reading speech, I confessed we were somewhat suspicious of this bill when we first saw it, because it was a, um, it was a government justice bill that on the face of it actually did a lot of good. And at that point, a year or so ago, we didn't have much experience of government justice bills that threatened to do good rather than be regressive and backward-looking. So, um, but yes, we did. Uh, good sense prevailed. It is a useful um, set of amendments that are being made, and for that reason, we are pleased to continue our support. The point's been made that this, uh, this bill amends legislation um, in every instance that are relatively new, um, certainly nothing more than 10 or so years old, 10, 12 years old perhaps. But clearly, um, some of the work of the bill is to acknowledge technology changes, particularly in the area of electronic monitoring and those sorts of things. We had some really interesting conversations at the Select Committee um, in terms of how continued technology changes might require us to, to adapt and adopt in terms of um, the, the, the increased sophistication of GPS. Um, it will enable us much more readily to identify exactly where offenders are located. And I think there will be a lot of goodwill to amending our legislation, our regulations, to enable us to, to adopt that um, technologies as they do evolve and improve. Um, some of the other minor, well not minor, some of the other amendments we agreed to were the um, giving more discretion to people at the coal faces, if you like, giving more discretion to probation officers to make um, changes, to affect changes, without necessarily having to recourse to the courts. We think that's appropriate, giving these people who are disciplined, hard-working people a degree of authority, discretion-making is a good thing. Well, the one provision we must also acknowledge that they are well supported in that work. We must not devolve responsibility without also devolving the ability and the resources those people require to do their very difficult work that they do in the community. I'd say in a general way we're supportive of this bill because we see community-based sentences as the way of the future. We know community-based sentences are far, far preferable to imprisonment, particularly to short terms of imprisonment. Uh, Mr Farfoy and Mr Goff have already rattled off the numbers, and that's useful, so I needn't delve into it. But we know community-based sentences are dramatically less expensive in financial terms than are short imprisonments, um, to the tune, I think, of a, barely a quarter of the cost. We know the recidivism rate of people who have served community sentences is also dramatically lower than people who do the short, uh, short prison terms or indeed long prison terms. So we do see that community sentences are the way forward. We should be resorting to them much more routinely. We need to be quite creative in how we assign and um, how we structure the requirement that people do community work, do community service in order, or indeed home detention, in order to repay, to be punished and to acknowledge that they have, have done wrong to the wider society. One of the great advantages of community sentences generally is that it removes that, that transition phase. And if I may be so bold as to insert an advertisement into this, uh, this, these comments, we saw last year an excellent book written by Anne Opie called From Outlaw to Citizen, Making the Transition to Prison in New Zealand. And it highlighted the enormous social and economic cost of, that, of imprisoning people, acknowledging that very, very few inmates in New Zealand do not ultimately end up back in our communities. To the extent that we can keep people out of prison in the first place, Prison brutalises people. It dehumanises them. It has them. It, uh, it reduces or even eliminates their ability of those people to function in normal society. And it is not helpful that we imprison such large numbers of people in New Zealand. Um, Anne Opie made the point that her, her book was very solidly grounded in academia, in research, 
anywhere you see in a bibliography reference to Derrida and Foucault, you know you're not in for an easy read. But it was also uh, blended with real-life stories based on interviews, the lived experience of New Zealanders who have been through the prison system and have come out worse off, and we are collectively worse off. As others have commented, I am under no illusions. We will always need some form of imprisonment. There are those people who are so damaged that they cannot and will never be able to be released back into society for the general safety and well-being. But that does not describe something like 85 per cent of our prison population who could be dealt with in ways other than imprisonment. And so refining, improving, broadening the range of community-based sentences that are available to the courts, that are available to us to to signal our disapproval of people's offending clearly, to ensure there is a level of, um, of restraint on their freedom for a time. But the purpose must always be to make them better able to, to operate in civil society, less likely to offend against it. And I'm pleased that we have got a degree of, um, of unity in the House on the, on the importance of community sentencing and the, some of the ways and means in which we might ensure that people do become contributing citizens, that they become the citizen rather than the outlaw, the recidivist outlaw that we're seeing far too much of at the moment. I think I can leave my comments there, except to um, once again close with yet another advertisement. I do believe that there's a great deal of good research being done, very commercial today indeed, yes, but all in a good cause. This evening I'm looking forward to going to the launch of yet another book. Professor John Pratt, a Professor of Criminology at Victoria, is releasing a book which is essentially a comparative study of New Zealand corrections, um, justice system, with those of the Nordic, the Northern European countries. And his findings in brief, and I do him a disservice by trying to sum it up in a line or two, effectively we're getting it very, very wrong with our focus on a punitive uh, prison-based system rather than one which seeks to deal with the individual, with their behaviours and to endeavour to keep those people within the community rather than isolate them from it, except in those extremely um, those those extreme cases which I've referred to earlier. So we do have a, an emerging body of knowledge, an emerging body of research that tells us how in New Zealand we can get it right. Thank you for the indication of support for my comments, Mr Hayes. I value those highly from you. Um, we have a body of research and information telling us how we can get it right in New Zealand. We have been getting it wrong for a, few, a long time. Increased focus on community sentences, improving the quality of those, improving the likelihood of success, turning around people, turning them away from a, a vicious cycle of offending and reoffending, uh, is clearly to our collective good, and we're happy to support this legislation. Kia ora. John Hayes. Rather than babble on with an